What's on your radar, Ryan? Well, last week, Vanity Fair published a new investigation to the origins of COVID after obtaining some 100,000 internal EcoHealth Alliance documents. The article is a thorough profile of EcoHealth, which is the organization that got millions from the NIH and funded gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now, the article adds some new pieces to the puzzle. News related to the lab leak hypothesis has been, has been arriving in a kind of drip, drip fashion over the past year or so. And with this new report, it's worth stepping back to see what the full picture looks like now. Now, over time, I'd come to believe that a lab leak is not just a plausible explanation for the origin of the pandemic, but actually more likely than not. Now, given what Vanity Fair has uncovered and combined with what we already knew, I now think it's extremely likely that it came from the lab. There's no definitive proof yet, but what we now have could fairly be called a circumstantial slam dunk. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. So for background, we already knew, thanks to documents obtained by my colleagues at The Intercept, that EcoHealth was funding research that mainstream virologists call gain of function at the Wuhan lab. We also know, thanks to a document leaked to a group of online pandemic detectives called Drastic, that EcoHealth applied to DARPA for funding for research that, if completed, could have produced a virus exactly like the one that launched the pandemic. So that means the key question is this, did the lab do some of the research outlined in that proposal? If they did, the act of performing that research would be a prime opportunity for it to escape the lab. But that's where the trail has gone a bit colder and speculation has filled the void. So EcoHealth claims it never performed any of the research. Yet scientists The Intercept spoke to said it would be highly unusual to apply for funding for research before having done even a small amount of it. But that leaves us with a he said, she said. Now the Vanity Fair story moves the question forward in an interesting way. So again, for background, the DARPA grant was put together in collaboration with Ralph Barrick, a UNC virologist known as one of the best in the world, and it drew on controversial gain-of-function research he'd done in 2015 that set off alarm bells in the scientific community and that even he acknowledged was extremely risky. Now, the Wuhan researchers were also heavily involved in putting that grant proposal together. What we also now know is that the Chinese military was collaborating with the researchers in the lab, something that had previously been denied by Shi Zheng Li, the Chinese scientist who ran that part of the lab. Here's how Catherine Eben of Vanity Fair put it. Quote, if China's military had been collaborating with the Wuhan Institute of Virology scientists, it's unclear if Peter Dajak would have realized it. He had far less visibility into uh, into the lab than he led on, a former EcoHealth Alliance staffer told Vanity Fair. The work being done there was, quote, always an enigma, unquote, the former staffer said. The nonprofit had hired a U.S.-based Chinese national who helped, quote, interpret for them what was happening inside the WIV, but we had to take everything at face value. It was more accept what it is because of this relationship between Xi and Daja, quote, he doesn't know what happened in that lab, said the former staffer, quote, he cannot know that. Ebon quotes virologist Simon Wayne Hobson saying that the DARPA proposal was, quote, basically a roadmap to a SARS-CoV-2 like virus. Wayne Hobson noted that if the research had the blessing of somebody like Barrick, then, quote, it is possible the WIV would have wanted to copy what it viewed as cutting edge science. Wayne Hobson added, that doesn't mean they did it, but it means it's legitimate to ask the question. So in other words, EcoHealth had no idea what research was going on there, and it's entirely logical that the scientists there would have put the paper into practice. So Dazak's denial is more than useless. It's actively deceptive. The question then is how likely is it that these Chinese scientists working with the People's Liberation Army used Barrick's roadmap and took the viruses out for a spin? Well, here's an even better question. Why would they not have done that? All the incentives are lined up. Doing groundbreaking research using a top virologist roadmap is a sure path to advancement. Making technological breakthroughs based on Western IP or research is how the Chinese economy grows. It would be stranger if they didn't do some of that research. Now, we also know that the pandemic started a little more than a year after the proposal was submitted. The timing all lines up. So add to this the fact that the Chinese government has been generally uncooperative and has been removing evidence from public databases, which we talked about earlier in the show today. Now, it's of course possible that this is all an insane string of total coincidences. 
But while there's now a completely coherent theory of how the virus jumped from the lab, there's nothing similar on the natural side. The proponents of the natural origin theory haven't yet identified how the virus made the jump, despite a big New York Times story that claimed as much in its headline recently, but then backed away from it lower in the story. In the past, scientists have been able to figure out the origin species pretty quickly. And now look, researchers should of course keep investigating, as there are still questions we don't have answers to. But as of now, a straightforward explanation has emerged. The U.S. funded pioneering gain-of-function research in 2015. Those researchers collaborated with colleagues in Wuhan. They continued the research there. It slipped out. We got a pandemic, and millions of people died. That can't yet be said with absolute certainty, but it's now far and away the most likely explanation. And I think this part about the Chinese military and also Peter Dajak's lack of visibility into the lab is crucial because he's been out here denying, okay, yes, we had this blueprint for a virus that looks exactly like the one that caused the pandemic, but we didn't do that research, we promise. It's like, well, how do you know that you didn't do that research? And it turns out, according to a former staff, he would have no way of knowing that. I'm starting to think this thing might have come from a lab. <laughs> it just might have. It just might have. Kidding, of course, because yes. I, I have thought that already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it also, the key that the evidence on the other side has not gotten right. better. We have not found that origin species. They, they did, uh, for the previous uh, SARS outbreak, find the, the species pretty quickly. And it, it's been longer than that time here. So that tells you something. And then, yes, we, we have them talking about doing research like this. And as you said, they, they probably would have done at least some preliminary work before applying right. for that grant, it wouldn't just be, oh, we would do this right. if you gave us this money. It's like, right. no, we would like to get this money, but we're doing right. this. Right. The lab already has, they would like to get the right. money, but the lab already has researchers. It already has money, too. <laughs> it already has money. The PLA has plenty of money. Yeah. And one of the reasons that the PLA and Chinese researchers do work with Western scientists is to get access to some of the best minds in the world. There's some brilliant Chinese scientists, some brilliant yeah. North Carolina scientists, Barrick, Barrick being one of them. And so if, if they're working with Barrick on this proposal, sure, why wouldn't they? Well, and that's so often right. how, how grants work. It's like the thing is already being done, and then you say, right. well, I might as well apply for this, right. this money fits. that fits what I'm doing, and then right. that'll, you know, that'll be great, but you're still doing it anyway. Right. And so as we talked about earlier, there's a ton more in this in this story that's uh, you know, extremely interesting. And, and a lot of and, and I think there needs to be a lot of accountability for people who kind of actively suppressed this mm -hmm. this discussion, uh, you know, whether you know, from Fauci on down, uh, because it's becoming increasingly clear that this is the most likely explanation at this point. Yeah. And there was a period of months where you were not allowed right. to discuss, allowed, acknowledge even, this on Facebook. Couldn't even, couldn't even acknowledge it. it. Which is pretty crazy. Right, and, and, and in order to get the proof, you would need a, access to a lot of information that is in the hands of the Chinese government. Right, which we may not get. Which we may never get. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, feel, it, almost, it feels like they feel responsible, but both, you know, if, if we funded it and pioneered it, and then they right. are the ones that kind of like right. spilled it, it's a, it was a team effort. Unaccountable uh, scientists, the sort of public health, I mean, the very people we have ceded massive new powers and authority to, to deal with this pandemic, were the, were the kinds of people incautiously uh, doing experimentation, do not doing uh, oversight, not aware of what they're doing, that very well may have caused this thing right. that has then you know, prompted the public to cede them more power. Right, and the, and the article also talks Horrible. about, and this has been written about before too, that the, the UNC lab has it, apparently, you know, world class, world class kind of safety precautions in place. I still don't think you want to do research that could end the world or create a <laughs> pandemic, but if you're going to do it, do it in a place that has like DEF CON level right. security. And as far as we know, I, I mean, there was no pandemic in 2015 despite this dangerous research, thank God. Uh, according to all of the reporting around the Wuhan lab, it's not, you know, it's more, you know, right. you've seen pictures of it. It looks like right. it's in a strip mall. Right. Like, that's not exactly where you want get what, some of the most get dangerous. What is the upside of this research? Right. What did we yes. get out of it? We their goal, <laughs> yes, their goal is to be able to predict where 
pandemics are coming from. <laughs> they're coming from labs where they're doing research. <laughs> but even if it wasn't, it came from uh, the, a wet market eight miles away and they didn't see it coming. <laughs> And right. that's where they were next the, door. It was the center of their research. So if they can't, so either they're complete failures or they create a pandemic. Those are the only two options. Those are the only two options. I agree. I'm looking forward to what's on your radar up next.